Hey loves, I am popping in here to share a beloved journal with you. But before I just showed you my hands and the pages, I just wanted to come in here and say hello. I've been in my studio for hours and um, it's a good day. I have about four projects going on and I'm dancing between all of them. I can't say I'm making tremendous progress, but I am making progress and it's just so good to be in this space and to have creative ideas whirling around my head. So without further ado, I'm going to finally post this YouTube video and do a flip through of one of my favorite journals. I'll see you on my desk. Bye. I am back at my desk and I love this desk. I, I don't know how many years ago, maybe it was five years ago, I went to do a show at a beautiful outdoor market and I realized I didn't have a table. So I bought this table and set it up in my booth and now it's in my studio and it's my desk and I love it. So it has lots of meaning and it just reminds me that even if I'm not prepared, I have what I need. I can find what I need. So a little backstory on a desk. And uh, this is one of my favorite journals and I wanted to share it with you. It's, you know, what do I like about it? Well, it's soft, so I could sew right on the cover. And I just love how it's kind of serendipitous in that it just came together. I didn't, I wasn't thinking super hard when I did this. I had had some photo transfers on a soft cover notebook. I'm trying to think, what was this? I think it was actually not a notebook. It was a soft cover children's book. And I was just playing. So I did some photo transfers they were very nondescript. Um, I took a piece of embroidery and I flipped it around and used the other side, which I really love. And I think that when we allow ourselves to explore possibilities, even, you know, using the side of something that's not intended, it just has so much freedom. And I then added, this is like, I think a piece of a scarf that I had in college that was super sheer and I put it over the photo transfers here someone from Poland sent me this amazing little pocket with some um, embroidery on it or needlepoint on it or some kind of knitting and I loved it I just absolutely loved it and I wanted to honor that she had sent me that and I put a little stick in here too from outside I don't remember her name we're definitely going back a few years on this journal but I do remember her kindness this is the side of a paper Christmas tree house I take them apart here's some that I'm going to use in other projects so I buy them and then I disassemble them and you could see like pieces of it, roofs, backs on my desk. And I just like using all the pieces. Uh, here is actually the front of it. And this will go on another project. I just think it's, I don't know, there's just something about it. It's so nostalgic. My mom used to use these all under her Christmas tree village and I used to play and it just really brings me back to holidays of long ago and just really good memories. So I always, you know, if I can put these in my work, if there's a place for them, I definitely do. On the back, I have an old postcard and just pieces that were, um, I used water soluble fiber to connect them and then I sewed them on the back and a picture of a little girl and 
pieces of, I think it's the same type of embroidery that was on the front. And again, I used the back. And then I had some medals. I'm super fond of pins to hold things, pieces of leather, just ways to keep things more intact. And here I wrote Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. Mercy was my word of the year. I want to say three or four years back. And here I just put a piece of paper from a magazine with an image of a window and I typed over it, which is one of my favorite things to do. It's just to put ripped images into my typewriter and see what, what comes out, see what's there, see what's just kind of right on the top. I enjoy how this whole page is layered. Again, a photo transfer, a feet, there's threads, bits of paper, another photo transfer here of a skirt that I loved. And here I wrote, I know Mercy. She is barefoot wearing soft white cotton that dried in the sun with faded stains of stray paint and lukewarm coffee. I am her, soft, sun-dried, cotton-stained. Forgiven, forgiving Mercy. And here I wrote, I typed on some vellum. Mercy given and received is light, full of layers, bubbles, floating spring life. I'm the layers of the skirt. I am light floating. I am mercy. And this year I was really trying to work on forgiveness for myself, for others. And like most things in my life, if I extend these courtesies to myself first, I find it so much easier to extend them to others. When people come to my workshops, I sometimes take out this art journal and I have so many. So each time, you know, someone's here, I grab something different or say something different. But something that is important about this journal that I did here in two places on these two pages was trying to remember kind things that were said to me. In this case, this is an anthropology catalog. And my husband ran in super quickly. He saw something on the table and he's like, did you have photos done again? And I was laughing. I was like, no, Mike, I didn't have photos done again. And, you know, this was an anthropology model, which just cracked me up. But, um, you know, he's getting older, his eyesight's going, but it was super incredibly wonderful and sweet. And I just wanted to remember that my husband thought this was me. Some words, the creative adult is the child who survived. I love that. And then here, I think I was like, I don't know, maybe 20, 21. I was renting a car in college. And that was when you could rent a car at a very young age. And this woman, when I got to the desk, she said, there's something about you that reminds me of water. And I, I knew when she said it, it was just the kindest, sweetest statement. Like it just felt like, I, I'm not sure what she was talking about. She was talking about a clarity or, um, I don't know. I, I don't know what she saw in me that day, but I just know that anytime I feel like water, I'm near water and drinking water, um, and if I remind someone of water, well, you know, all of that is good. And I wanted to put it here. There was just a piece from a magazine that said, and welcome to everything that crossed our path that summer. That's who I'd like to be all the time. I'd like to be someone who welcomes everything that crosses my path. Some original writing that became a card. Listen to that voice whispering. Listen to that voice inside you whispering softly. Keep going. It will lead you home. And it led me to a little town called Lambertville, New Jersey. And this is an old map of where I live now. And 
I was listening to a voice. You know, not every page has something to say. Um, you know, some pages in my journals are blank. Some may look unfinished, and that's fine. When I work, I'm really trying to convey a feeling, and I'm trying to get emotions out of me. So however they come out, that's okay with me. Here, picture of a knife, and I wrote, Mercy. Spreading forgiveness like honey butter over homemade bread. Soothing and familiar. I love that. And I'm not sure I would have written those words if I didn't have this picture of a butter knife here. So that's the way that I just use images to get words out of me. And here, I wrote a few other things in this book that I'll share with you. Sometimes the wind blows in such a way that I can taste being 10 again. I feel free and floating with the sun on my face, as if for a moment I'm rolling down the hill in the backyard with an imaginary friend, wearing someone's granny dresses. And I'm completely in that moment, alone, safe with my forever or with my ever constant imagination. I wanna grow older with that kind of joy, that kind of ease, not thinking at all that hard about tomorrow because I am so here. I love that. I wanna grow older with that kind of joy, that kind of ease, not thinking all that hard about tomorrow because I'm so here. Yes, yes, yes. And this year, my word of the year is now. So it's as if I wrote a message to myself for today to read. And that's another way that these art journals work for me. It's almost like I'm talking to future me. I'm writing what future me needs to see. So I have to get in a place where I'm not judgmental, where... I am allowing, I'm allowing mistakes. I'm allowing just realness because when I take out that editing voice, then that's when I get to all the goodness in my work. And here I typed on cloth, trust your layers. That became a print. And then just some other pages. Um, thinking a little bit here when I wrote this about um, what we carry from past generations. We carry the joy and the heartbreak of our ancestors and our blood and bones. Unaware, we pass it on. Aware, we see the pain and sit with it. And then we let it go and keep the joy. That is what goes forward. We free ourselves. We free our children. I believe all the deep work we do is work the world needs. Deeply, I believe this. Here I typed on some painted plastics. Soft, yielding, flexible, giggling. Yes. Yes to all of that. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, pages that just are layered. Again, I don't need to have, you know, meaning all the time. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, as I look at this, I'm like, hmm, she needs to get, you know, glued down here. She's kind of coming up, this little girl. And, you know, just like our houses, just like clothing, just like our bodies, the things that we love need care. And I do find myself scope you know, going in and repairing these journals. So anyway, this is my first little flip through of a journal. And, um, you know, let me know what you think. Let me know what you'd like to see in my studio if you want to see how I organize or, you know, anything. Just leave me a little note and I will read them and we'll go from there and I'll just show up. <laughs> I'll just show up like I did today. And uh, I'm not going to think too hard about it. And I invite you to do that too, to show up today and just show up, just totally show up.
and let that be enough. So big hugs and I will see you soon.